This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's Halloween time. Man, I love this season, and I wanted to make sure that we had something extra special and extra fun, because this video comes out right before Halloween. And since it's the spooky season, I figured, hey, who better to feature than friend of the channel, Spooky? Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may recognize Spooky as one of the guys working on the BLE spam projects. Spooky had this Samsung BLE spam, which basically made a Samsung phone more or less unusable while the spam was running. Well, now, Spooky's back with his very own project, Ghost ESP. Ghost ESP aims to be a brand new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth penetration testing tool, kind of like ESP32 Marauder. It's got new features and a web UI, which allows you to install it on just about anything, including this really cool, super tiny ESP32 C3 Super Mini. So grab a handful of that Halloween candy that you surely overbought, who cares about the trick-or-treaters, and let's get at it. So if you're a frequent viewer of my channel, you'll know all about the ESP32 Marauder by Just Call Me Coco. So Marauder is the name of the firmware that people are using for Wi-Fi penetration testing. However, it's also a standalone device made by Just Call Me Coco. Here's mine. It runs on an ESP32 room and it also has a GPS. Very, very cool. I absolutely love this thing. Now, since its inception, the ESP32 Marauder hasn't really had any firmware options aside from running Marauder. Until now, Spooky's been working on the Ghost ESP firmware for a while now, and while it is still a work in progress, it has a bunch of really, really cool features, which makes it really stand on its own. Now, we'll go over absolutely everything in just a couple minutes, but let's start off by listing out all the great new features that makes Ghost ESP special. It features the fan favorite wall of flippers, which will detect any nearby flipper zeros using Bluetooth. Another really cool feature is it actually has a live evil portal. So you're more or less doing a man in the middle attack with any who connects to your rogue access point and that's very cool another pretty exciting feature that ghost esp has is it will do a vulnerability scan on nearby access points and see if they're susceptible to a wps brute force attack i love the idea that you can use ghost esp to search your own networks for vulnerabilities it's such a great idea another cool feature of ghost esp is it will allow you to print text on a wi-fi enabled printer which is just wild that's right, you can use a Flipper Zero to print text on a network attached printer. In my opinion, one of the coolest features of Ghost ESP now is the fact they've integrated a web UI. So now all you need is a teeny tiny ESP32 and a cell phone, and you've got yourself a super covert, easy to use Wi-Fi pen testing tool. That is just way too cool. But you know who else is way too cool? Today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything when it comes to PCB design, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and and more. Now, this teeny tiny ESP32 C3 Micro Mini can be integrated into almost anything if you make your own custom boards. And that's where PCBWay can help. No matter what the project, PCBWay will be with you every step of the way, making sure it's as easy as possible to make whatever your project come to reality. Thank you so much, PCBWay, for your continued support. You guys are the best. Let's get back at it. All right, so let's take a look at some of the cool new features that Ghost ESP has to offer. One of the cool things that Spooky's been up to is trying to port over Ghost ESP to his many devices as he can. Here it is running on AWOX Dual ESP Mini. Now this runs extremely well on this hardware. It's got a great refresh rate and the little joystick down there makes it extremely easy to control. Like, look, we can just move around, go to Wi-Fi, and let's see, it says scan. We can just start scanning and it's gonna go through and scan all of the nearby Wi-Fi's just like Marauder. It's very, very cool. And it's got this awesome animation in the beginning. I absolutely love it. The fact that he's already got a UI working for an attached screen is super cool because again, you don't need to have this at all. Spooky's even in the process of getting touchscreen to work. So it'll work on things like the dual touch from AWOC and the ESP32 Marauder by Just Call Me Coco. Now the beauty of it is you don't even need a screen to run Ghost ESP. Here I've got it running on my BFFB by Just Call Me Coco. Now, for some reason, it makes that LED incredibly bright. So I'm going to put some tape over it so I stop blinding myself. OK, there we go. Way better. So Spooky made himself a Flipper application file or FAP file. So we can control the Ghost ESP right with our Flipper. So let's plug this absolute monster into USB and then we can pull up QFlipper on the computer and see what's going on. All right, so here we go. This is uh, my Flipper Zero. It's running the latest dev version of Momentum. And if anybody asks, I am the yapper. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go into our apps, go into GPIO, and then down to ESP, obviously. 
and then Ghost ESP. Now, this does not currently come with the Momentum firmware. I'll have to load it on and I'll show you how to do it in just a little bit. So let's fire it up. It's gonna say app too old. It's because I literally updated Momentum to the latest dev build this morning, which is actually a newer version than what Spooky's on right now. But if it says that, it's probably not an issue. We're just gonna to go to continue and it's gonna run anyway. So what I'm gonna show you right now is going into BLE and then we're gonna to go to find the flippers because this is wall of flippers. So if we click this, we can see we're gonna start scanning and you can start seeing those are my flippers showing up right on screen right there. It's so cool. So if we exit out of that, we can actually see that this works pretty much like everything else. You can run a BLE spam detector, uh, air tag sniffer, and snip Bluetooth so you're going to see any Bluetooth devices that are available in the area. Let's go through some more features that you can see from the Flipper Zero. So you can see over in GPS, which is kind of cool. This does have a GPS because it's the BFFB. It's got pretty much everything. Uh, let's go to GPS street detector. So it's going to try to detect what street I'm on. Can you do that? Let's see. Many, many unbearable moments later. So I currently don't have a fix on any satellites, which is fine. It takes a couple minutes for that to happen. But again, these are all some really cool features that are added into Ghost ESP. Let's see what else we got. So if we go into, let's go into Wi-Fi. We can scan our access points, scan Wi-Fi stations, uh, list access points, list stations, station AP. All of these are just kind of your basic ESP32 Marauder features. We'll keep going down and let's see what else we got in here. So here's our evil portal. I'm going to actually show you how to do this a little bit later in an easier way, because one of the downsides of having it on a Flipper Zero is you're stuck with the Flipper Zero keyboard, which is not great. We can connect to Wi-Fi. This is actually how you print to a printer. You'll connect to your Wi-Fi using your credentials, and then you'll enter in the IP address of your printer. Unfortunately, one of the things that happens on my setup is that my printer actually blocks this kind of connection, um, you know, good security. But for a lot of other printers, it works. And here's actually a video of Spooky doing it himself. Another cool thing that's in there is that you can actually, if any smart TVs are hooked up to your network, uh, you can go to the dial random video and it's gonna pull up a random video and play on any smart TV on your network. So this is how you connect to your Wi-Fi. So you just enter in your Wi-Fi credentials and then this will connect directly to your Wi-Fi. And then you can go down to printer power, enter in the IP address of the printer, and then it will print whatever you want to it, which is super cool. Again, I couldn't get it working on my setup because my network won't allow that kind of connection because, you know, good security. So you can try this on your own and it might work. All right, cool. So let's hop off of this and try some other cool features. All right, so let's show another cool way to access Ghost ESP, and that's through the web UI. Now, the web UI makes it super easy because all you got to do is connect this little guy to power, which could be powered by your phone or a computer. Then you can access it through the phone or the computer. Couldn't be easier. All right, so now that we have our ESP32 plugged in right here, bam, all we got to do is go down to the desktop and load it up on our Wi-Fi. So we're in our desktop. Let's go over here and we see a ghost net connects. It's going to ask for the security key, which is actually ghost, G-H-O-S-T-N-E-T, -E capital G, capital N. Very important. Just like the access point name. Easy. Connects and whatever. Click yes. And it's going to connect to that. But it's going to sit there and hang up for a second. I don't know why it does it on Windows, but it's fine. We'll just close that and it'll work in just a second. So what we want to do is go to ghostesp.local. Perfect. Now we have the web UI for Ghost ESP. It's super cool and super easy. So yeah, you can see how you can set up the BLE settings, evil portal settings. This is how you connect to the printer and print stuff over the phone, over your flipper. It's super cool. And RGB settings. The RGB has basically there's a lot of the ESPs have uh, little LEDs on them and you can use Ghost ESP to change the colors of the LEDs. This is kind of fun. If you click on help, you also get all of the commands, which makes life a little bit easier. So what we're going to be doing is doing the evil portal. So we make sure offline mode set like this now there's a bug in this version where there will be at some point a start portal button down there we're gonna have to do that manually but again not a big deal we're gonna enter the url that we want to catch so we're gonna do https s is important colon slash slash facebook.com slash login so that page has not a lot of assets not a lot of css so it's really easy for our tiny chip to be able to use that so we're going to enter in the real SSID for our Wi-Fi. So this is how we're actually connecting to the internet. So I'll enter mine and the real password. Now we want to have our evil portal access point name. So we'll say Ghost Squatch. 
Now the portal domain, it's not a big deal. It's gonna show up as whatever it writes dot local. So if I write Facebook, it's gonna say Facebook dot local slash login. Easy. So let's make it Facebook. Make it a little bit more believable. Hit save. Boom. Save successful. Fantastic. Now, the trick is because he didn't put the button on there yet, which it should be up there by then, we're going to actually have to go into the serial console over here. So if we go to spookytools.com, go to the serial console, click on connect, connect, connect. There we go. As long as you see the green text right there, it means we're good to go. So all we have to do now is go to start portal. Bam. Hit send. And you'll notice there we go it's starting the portal right now it's also going to kick us off of that wi-fi that we were on the spooky uh, esp one because it's starting our new one that we set in the web ui so all we have to do now is if we go and log into that go squatch here we go pop that open hit connect now if you're on a phone it's going to take you to a login page uh since we're not on a phone i have to kind of force it to do what it's supposed to do no big deal oh okay Oh, because I'm connected to Ethernet, it always takes you to MSN. So again, don't be surprised about that. But 192.168.4.1, that's going to load what it's actually supposed to load on there. And there we go. Now we're at facebook.local slash login. Super, super cool. So yeah, this is running directly through the ESP. This is not connected directly to the internet. So we're going from my computer to the ESP that's running Ghost ESP back to my internet. So it's the intermediary there, which is very cool. The possibilities for this are literally endless. It is such a cool thing that you can do. And I know there is a board coming out in the future that's aimed to try to take advantage of all this stuff. All right, so now that you've seen all the cool things that Ghost ESP can do, editing Sasquatch here. As a lot of you know, I record one week ahead, and in the time between I film this and when this video is going up, Spooky had another feature. So I wanted to show you the new feature that's out there. It's Rave Mode. It's very cool. So Rave Mode is a visualizer that connects over UDP to your network, and yeah, it shows a visualizer for whatever you're playing on your computer. It's really cool. All right, so now that you've seen all the cool things that Ghost ESP can do, let's go ahead and install it. Spooky was also able to create a flasher, so if you're flashing anything like the C3 or pretty much everything except the Wi-Fi dev board from Flipper, this is how you do it right over at flasher.spookytools.com. So once you're plugged in, all we got to do is go and select my board. This is an ESP32 C3, because that's what this one is. Click on that. Click on Flash. It's going to pop up right here on JTAG. Good. Hit Connect. Serial port opened. And wait, now this is an ESP32 C3. This is one of the newest, fastest ESP32s out here. So this thing actually goes pretty darn quick once it starts flashing. After these messages, we'll be right back. If you're using a slower board, like an ESP32 room, it takes a lot longer, but this thing flies, it's awesome. And just like that, we're done. It's that easy. Now you're running Ghost ESP on this little guy. Simple. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, I've got a Flipper Zero. That's why I'm here. How do I install Ghost ESP on my Flipper Zero? While it's not quite as easy as Spooky's Flasher, Space Hoon, who's been around forever, the guy is a legend. He's got his own flasher who makes it super easy to do. All right, so first things first, we're going to take our board. We're going to hold down the boot button. The boot button's the one that's all the way on the right. Hold that down. There we go. Make sure you hear it. Click. Plug in our USB-C cable, and then we can let go of the boot button. That puts it into bootloader mode. All right, so from there, we need our files. So we're going to navigate over to Spooky's Ghost ESP GitHub, link down below, and go ahead, give him a star while we're here. We're doing an entire episode on Ghost ESP. He deserves a star. So we'll go from there, and we're going to go down and go to releases. And then we're just going to go ahead and download the ESP32 S2 for Flipper. Click that. It's going to download. We'll save it to the desktop. Boom. Easy. Minimize that. We're just going to go to extract all and we're going to extract them all to the desktop should open a folder here we go folder opens on the wrong screen we all know that here we go and now we have our three files so when we have we have our bootloader ghost esp and our partition table good to have so what we're going to do from here we're going to navigate over to space hoon's web flasher we're going to go ahead and just click connect like we did before we'll see esp32 s2 gone com 13 good connecting 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 perfect so let's select our files first, then we're going to change our channels, right? So select files. We're over here. Flipper. That's, that's not the right one. There we go. We're going to go bootloader. We're going to go ghost ESP. It's our firmware file. And then we're going to go to partition table. And then I've got it written down over here. Bootloader. Copy and paste to make sure I don't do it wrong. Bootloader is going to go to OX1000. 
Okay, it's already there. Partition table is going to be 8,000. 8,000. And then firmware is at 10,000. 10,000. Cool. And hit program. Are you sure? Continue. Let's go. We'll be right back. It was that simple. So let's fire up QFlipper and see if it works. If we refresh this page, it should disconnect the ESP32. Not that it really matters. And plug into our flipper. Eh. Fire up QFlipper. Plug the flipper into the computer. And let's see if it works. Let's see. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, we still need the application file. I forgot about that part. No problem. So what we're going to do from here is actually go to the Discord for Ghost ESP. If you go into the news column right here, Flipper app download, just click on that, visit site, and it should just go ahead and download it. So Ghost ESP FAP, I've already got it on my desktop because of course I do. And we can do that. We'll minimize this, minimize that. And we've got Flip Q Flipper open already. So all we'll have to do is we go to back, go into our files, SD card, gonna go into apps, and then GPIO, ESP, and this is where you just drag and drop the file. Here's Ghost ESP FAP, drag and drop right there. Couldn't be easier and it's already ready to go. So if we drop out of here, go into there. Now we can go to do, 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 apps, GPIO, ESP, Ghost ESP. Boom, and let's make sure it works. Scan access points. Perfect, it's working, it's that easy. Yeah, there's a couple extra steps because we gotta use Space Hoon's web flash, but it's not that bad. You can handle it, I, I I believe in you guys, I do. So yeah, that's Ghost ESP by Spooky. It's a really fun new project. I'm so glad he brought it to my attention. He's done a great job on it. Thank you each and every one of you guys for getting this far in the video. Thanks for watching this over every other video on the internet. You guys are absolute legends. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. We'll catch you next time.